Luke 23, verses 50 to 56, the burial of Jesus. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid inside. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of my favourite TV dramas of all time is Inspector Morse, closely followed by its sequel, Lewis. I could watch the same episodes over and over again. In fact, I have. I never get bored with them, and that's because I just love the characters, I love the drama, I love the story. But for all my enjoyment of watching repeats of those programmes, the experience is never quite as special as seeing them for the first time. The power of a really great story will be such that we're gripped by it, even though we know what happens in the end. But such stories are never quite so powerful as the first time we hear them, because it's then that we really enter into the story and we're engaged by the suspense of not knowing how things will turn out. When we read the Gospels, we must be aware of our familiarity with them. We know that Jesus did not stay in the grave, that out of his death came resurrection. But the first disciples didn't. I think that's why Holy Saturday, the day between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, is so important in the overall narrative. Our problem today is that we simply leap from the Friday to the Sunday without properly pausing between the two. In so doing, we bypass that block of time that in many ways was the most painful for the disciples. Jesus had died and he'd been buried. That first Saturday must have been agonising. It must have seemed so much longer than a single day. To discover the power of the Easter story, we need to approach it not as a story whose ending we already know, but as though we were watching it unfold for the first time. Only then can we be brought close to the experience of the earliest followers of Jesus, for whom, more than for anyone else in history, reality was turned completely upside down. So on this day, let's allow the message of Good Friday to really, really linger. Take stock deeply of what happened on the cross. Because it's when we find ourselves right there, in that place of utter bewilderment and devastation, that we need to hear that message that God is about to do something truly amazing. Let's pray. Lord God, on this day, we remember Jesus in the grave. To most people's eyes, it looked as if it were all over. He was dead and buried. But only as a seed dies when it is planted in the earth, not to decay, but to spring to new life. Teach us to take our refuge in you. Help us to remember that death is not our end. May we always hope in you. And may we be poised for what you are about to do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.